Hey kids, welcome to unit three, lesson 10, finding duplicates, exercise number three. It's our last lesson of the unit, kids. And this is really tying up one dimensional arrays. And we're gonna flirt a little with two dimensional arrays as well. And kids, just so you know the importance of this entire unit, the reason we go over arrays is because that is one of your FRQs on the exam. Remember, you have four questions. You know what they are. Classes, method and control structures. That was our first unit. Arrays 1D and arrays 2D. And we talked a lot about arrays 1D in this unit. And in the next unit, we're going to talk about 2D arrays. Let's go ahead and jump into this exercise, see what we have to do. In Netflix.java, we're going to write a has duplicate method to return true if there are duplicate elements in the subscription fees array. In my console.java, we're gonna print the results of a call to the has duplicate method on the my Netflix stats object to check the array for duplicates. Curious about the data set? You always should be kids. Check it right there. Let's take a look at our code. This looks like what we've seen the last couple of lessons. We're creating a file reader, passing our country's text file, we're creating an array countries. We have our my file reader object calling the get string data method, passing the parameter 65. The my file reader objects calling set file, passing the fees text file. And then we're creating another array fees. And my file reader is calling the get double data method, passing at 65. Creating our final object from the Netflix class, my Netflix stats. And that's passing our countries and fees array. File reader looks like our standard file reader we've been using for the last couple of lessons. Our country text is all of the countries in alphabetical order. The fees are the fees to the corresponding countries in order. And we have our Netflix Java. We have two variables countries and subscription fees. We have one constructor, it is taking two uh, variables, countries and subscription fees from here. And then we have a public Boolean has duplicate, nothing else. So what do we have to write here? And this one might be a little confusing because exercise one, little disjointed from this lesson. You're probably thinking, what does a nested for loop really have to do with anything? And what we're essentially going to do here is we're going to do our column and rows. And if you know, if we put the same values on the row and the columns, eventually we're going to have overlapping data we can compare. And that's what we're doing here. We're putting our values on both our row and column, searching through it. And if any of those values are equal to each other, well, then we're going to return either a true or a false. How do we know we have to return a true or a false? Well, it's a Boolean data type. So that's our first clue there. Let's go ahead and get started coding this up here. This is gonna be a lot like we've done before. We have to return something. So we have to create a variable to store it. And our variable is gonna be a Boolean type, true or false. We'll just call it status to make it easy. Let's set it to false initially. Now we're going to do our nested for loop. Let's take care of our outer for curly Q's. I'm going to call this outer loop. What do we want inside of it? Well, we have to do our standard loop. That means we're going to do an integer this time. Instead of I, I'm going to call it start. Just going to help me know where I'm at. We're going to set that equal to zero like we have before. And as long as start, is less than and what array are we going through well the subscription fees one so subscription fees dot length we want to increase start by one start plus plus how does a nested for loop work well you got to put another for loop in there so we're going to go for curly braces this is going to be our inner and what do we want to have inside here? We need another loop, right? And really what we want to do is we want to compare the value to the next one. 
and we want to see if the next value is the same. And if we do that over rows and columns, we're going to compare every value. That means I just want to take my index, move it over one. And I'm just going to call this now next. So int next is going to equal whatever my start one is plus one. And then we're going to go as long as next is less than the subscription fees dot length. Now we just need next to go up one. So that's our rows and columns looking through one at a time. Now we need our if statement because if something happens, we need to set it to true. And what do we want to do? We just want to compare one to the next one. So if parentheses, some curly Q's, let's comment this out. This is our if, and if subscription fees at start is equal equal or the same as subscription fees to next oh we don't want a semicolon there kids then we're just going to change status to true clean up our code here a little. We also have to change what we want to return. We don't want to return false. We want to return our status. Well, that should be our complete code to check and see if there's any duplicates and fees. We're not done yet. We have to go over to my console. We have to print the results of a call to has duplicate. What's that going to look like? Well, we're going to go system.out.println. And inside here, we're going to say duplicate subscription fees in different countries. And then we'll do a space. Ooh, looks like we forgot our quotes. Put a quote there. Quote there. We're going to concatenate and then we need to have our call and we're using my Netflix stats to call the has duplicates method. Let's make sure we have everything there. It looks pretty good. Spelling looks okay. We should definitely go back to Netflix here and just make sure subscription fees is all spelled right. Well, kids already see a spelling error there. Copy that one in. Let's check that again. Well, that looks much better. Should have checked that earlier. That looks pretty good. Now when I hit run, kids, I should get true for duplicate fees. Because if we go down to duplicate, we can see there is a couple duplicate fees. 1467 is one. 1099 is another. So we should definitely get true back when we hit run. Well, let's see if our code's right, kids. Looks like we got it. Key takeaway from this lesson is understanding how a nested for loop works. It consists of two arrays that loop. First, the outer loop runs, but just once. Then the entire inner loop runs for the length of the array. The loop control variable handles the rest. In this lesson, we compared the fees against themselves. How did we do that? We moved the inner array over by one each loop. This means in the outer loop, we started with our first value from subscription fees, which was $6.30. We then moved to the inner loop, which is also subscription fees. We start on the element next to $6.30, which is $12.12. $6.30 then compares itself against the rest of the elements in subscription of fees until it reaches the end. Once it does that, the outer loop progresses to the next element, which is $12.12. .12. 
The inner loop also moves over by one. It then again compares itself to the rest of the subscription fees array until it reaches the end. By doing this, each element in the array will compare itself with every other element until it either finds a double and returns true or it reaches the end and returns false. Kids, this was a really tough lesson. This concept wasn't anything that's ever been even shown to you prior to this and something you really kind of had to understand on the fly. I will say there is a whole unit on 2D arrays coming up. So if you really didn't understand it, don't worry. We're going to cover it a little more in depth pretty soon. Hopefully kids, this video helped you understand how to find duplicates. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.